It's a wonderful time once again that uh, we gather on this Sabbath to the Lord for what He is doing in our midst. And uh, I know the Lord has good plans for us. The Lord would want to do something special in our lives. This is the series. We are times when uh, we have to make the word of God the rule of our lives. This is important if we will survive the crisis before us. And so I like to look at the room experience. An upper room experience is what all of us need at such a time as this. And we can't have we have not given ourselves fully to Christ. We can't have To Jesus Christ and uh, like us to just we be and you have given us the Lord to be a blessing unto us and so tabernacle with us as you tabernacle with the Israel in the wilderness and let us experience the Shekinah glory Father, guide our minds and hold them captive to to be submitted to the worship the end. In His name I pray. Amen. Uh, I'd like us to look at something in the book of Acts. This is after the death of Jesus Christ. The disciples uh, early rain. We are admonished to read this book because it is a prerequisite in understanding even the what was the main objective of uh, the disciples while they were awaiting the outpouring of the early rain. They were not just waiting in idleness, but their hearts watching their hearts. the book of two verses one. The book of Acts chapter two verses one. This is what the Bible reads. Acts 2, 1. And when the day of the Pentecost was come, they were all in one accord, in one place. This was what brought about the early rain. 
nothing could be more important on the day and sharing in the things of Jesus. They had to put away their differences. They had to make sure that uh, they were putting away their differences. And in this day, the children so that he may do his marvelous work for the church. In this time, we must have an upper room experience. We must have a close connection with Jesus Christ if we are going to receive the latter rain. And so, brothers and sisters, what we need at such a time as this is a connection with Christ. A connection that uh, no enemy or no world persuasions can take us away from an anchor we hold on onto the given. We need to have experience in us. And uh, reading from the prophet, she says, it is with an earnest longing that I look forward to the time when the events of the day of Pentecost shall be repeated with even greater power than on that occasion. John says, I saw another angel come down from heaven having great power and the earth was lightened with his glory. Revelation 18.1 Then as, the, as at the Pentecostal season, the people will hear the truth spoken to them every man in his own tongue. In visions of the night, representations passed before me of a great reformatory movement among God's people. Many were praising God, the sick were healed, and other miracles were wrought. A spirit of intercession was seen, even as was manifested before the great day of Pentecost. And so just looking at what Sister White talks about in Last Day Events, page 202, paragraph 3 and paragraph 4, there are some essential things which are mentioned that we need to get them right if we will have an experience in the latter rain. And she mentions that uh, the truth was spoken to them. If the truth was spoken to the people on the day of Pentecost, that the truth had been studied prior to that time, that while the disciples were gathered in the upper room, they were not just having an experience of anything else, but an experience of looking into the truth. And that is why when the day of Pentecost came and the early rain started follow, uh, falling, they could share what they had investigated in the scriptures to the other people. And so if we will share in the latter rain, then it means that right now what we should be studying is truth and nothing else but the truth. Look at the book of Deuteronomy chapter 32. Deuteronomy, the book of Deuteronomy 32 verses 1 to verses 3. Hear what the word of God says. Give ear, O ye heavens, and I'll speak, and hear, O earth, the words of my mouth. My doctrine shall drop as the rain, my speech shall distill as the dew, as the small rain upon the tender herb, and as the showers upon the grass. Because I'll publish the name of the Lord, ascribe ye greatness unto our God. The participation in the latter rain is the speaking of the truth. My doctrine, Deuteronomy 32, verse 2. The publishing of the name of the Lord and ascribing the greatness unto God. 
And what does it mean to ascribe greatness to God? It is by publishing the truth and living according to that truth. It is allowing the garment of righteousness which he has given unto us to remain spotless. That is how we shall be able to ascribe the greatness. That is how we shall publish the name of the Lord unto the world. This is the upper room experience. Uh, 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 the upper room experience. This is what the disciples were doing. They were actually participating in investigating scriptures and bringing the truths together so that they may be able to go to the world and share to the world. They were not just waiting for the early rain in idleness, in doing their own things, but they had dedicated their lives fully unto God so that they may be used by God when the early rain comes. And this is what we should be doing as a people. That uh, we should be uh, waiting upon the Lord patiently in truth and seeking to know Him more and to know what is truth and to walk in it. This is the upper room experience that everyone must have if they will participate in proclaiming the truth of the latter rain. And so the other thing that the disciples were doing in the upper room is that they were involved in intercession, a need for at such a time to prepare a people to be a reformatory movement. Look again at the screen. In visions of the night, Representation passed before me of a great reformatory movement among God's people. Many were praising God, the sick were healed, and the miracles were wrought. A spirit of intercession was seen even as was manifested before the great day of Pentecost. So before the great day of Pentecost, there was a manifestation of an intercession amongst the disciples and this has to happen amidst us as a people. We have to be a people who will be involved in intercession, a people who know how to spend time with God and experience the moving of the Holy Spirit. Look what she says again in the Messages Book 1. In the session, we are looking at uh, an upper room experience. 1 SM, page 122. Selected messages 122, paragraph 1. This is in preparation. For the latter rain, an upper room experience. She says the old standard bearers knew what it was to wrestle with God in prayer and to enjoy the outpouring of His Spirit. But these are passing off from the stage of action and who are coming up to fill their places. How is it with the rising generation? Are they converted to God? Are we awake to the work that is going on in the heavenly sanctuary? Or are we waiting for some compelling power to come upon the church before we shall arouse? Are we hoping to see the whole church revived? That time will never come. And so the people think that uh, there shall be a compelling power which shall come upon the people during the latter rain. Such a compelling power will not be there if the people have not prepared their souls if the people have not chosen earlier to be used by God. In fact, when that time of the latter rain comes, this is what we are told. We are told in the book Last Day Events, Last day events, page uh, 179. 
last day event nine it should be paragraph two if we are waiting upon some compelling power to come then it will be too late look, look what it says the great issue so near at hand enforcement of Sunday laws will weed out those whom God has not appointed and he will have a pure, true, sanctified ministry prepared for the latter rain. And so as the blue laws and the Sunday laws come, they will not prepare anyone for the latter rain, but they will find a people who are already prepared to receive the latter rain. The latter rain does not prepare anyone. To receive the latter rain. The latter rain falls on the people, on the ministry which are prepared and those who are not prepared, they are weeded out. That, that's when we shall see many falling away. We shall see many a star whom we have the truth. We are told if you are with me together that uh, the time is not far distant when the test will come to every soul in this time the gold will be separated from the dross in the church true godliness will be clearly distinguished from the appearance and tinsel of it many are stars admired for it will go out in darkness chaff like a cloud will be borne away on the wind even from places where we see only flow Flowers of rich wheat. All who assume the ornaments of the sanctuary but are not clothed with Christ's righteousness will appear in the shame of their own nakedness. Christian service, page 49, paragraph 3. And so the upper room experience we, is to help us as a people be prepared for the latter rain to fall on us. We have to wait for the latter rain. It is coming upon people who are prepared. The Lord in his mercy is bringing the spirit upon the people who are already prepared for it. It is not something that we shouldn't be waiting for in Ten. The book of Zechariah chapter 10 from verse 1. Ask ye of the Lord rain in the time of the latter rain, so the Lord will make bright clouds and give them showers of rain to every one grass in the field. For the idols have spoken vanity, and the diviners have seen a lie, and have told false dreams, they comfort in vain. Therefore they went their way as a flock, they were troubled because there was no shepherd. Mine anger was kindled against the shepherds, and I punished the gods, for the Lord of hosts has visited the flock, the house of Judah, and has made them as his goodly horse in the battle. We are not to wait for the latter rain, we are to ask of the Lord for the rain in the time of the latter rain, and the time of the latter rain has been during the third angel's message, which started way before in 1840s. Back in the years 1847-1848, the third angel's message started, and it was a message of Babylon is fallen, if anyone partakes of the name, the mark of the beast, when the Sabbath truth was brought on to be pro uh, 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 prominent, that is when we started the time of the third angel's message, and it coincides with the latter rain. And yet the showers have been withheld, and the latter rain is not falling because there are no people who are prepared, the fields are not prepared to uh, receive it. And we know that the world is the field that it should receive the latter rain. But if the field is not prepared, then even when the rain itself falls on it, it will not be benefited. So the upper room experience is to prepare a people to be fit, to be benefited by the latter rain. But we have been like a people who are asleep. at the Acts of Apostle, page 38 and 39. Christ's ascension to heaven was the sign that his followers were to receive the promised blessing. For this they were to wait before they entered upon their work. 
when Christ passed within the heavenly gates, he was enthroned amidst the adoration of the angels. As soon as this ceremony was completed, the Holy Spirit descended upon the disciples in, in rich currents, and Christ was indeed glorified, even with the glory which he had with the Father from all eternity. The Pentecostal outpouring was heaven's communication that the Redeemer's inauguration was accomplished. And when he is just about to come out of the most holy place, we shall see things who are witnessed in the time of the early reign. The Pentecost is fulfilled in the outpouring of the early and latter rains to ripen the fr first fruits and the second fruits, respectively of the great harvest, Acts chapter 2, Zechariah chapter 10, and Revelation chapter 8, and James chapter 5, verses 8 and 9, verse 7 and 8. On the Pentecost, about 3,000 so 3, souls were Christ as the first fruit of the apostles. They work of Christ where they had not worked for us such. The latter rain is to ripen the spiritual harvest. The latter rain to ripen the spiritual harvest will be is in the days or in the days of the third angel when the message swells into a loud cry. Revelation 14, 9 to 12 and uh, Revelation 18, 1 to 5. And so we, we are living the times where the Lord will want to do something his church as we are seeing calamities over the land and we are seeing uh, uh, everything that was prophesied in the book of Matthew chapter 24 and in the book of Revelation chapter 6 and subsequent chapters all these things that were prophesied are happening right before us and we have to give ourselves to Christ fully we have to be reconsecrated to Christ anew so that uh, we may be able to stand in the day of the Lord that is approaching stealthily upon us. We are told that it will not get the righteous as a thief in the night because they are not the children of darkness. The prophet says, continues to say, that uh, let us read and receive and present to others the second chapter of the book of Acts. We need a deeper piety and the sincere meekness of the great teacher. I am instructed that the whole book of Acts is our lesson book. All of us need to humble our own individual hearts and be converted daily. Letter 32, 1910 by Sister E.G. White. And so the book of Acts chapter 2 and the entirety of the book of Acts should be read by the people who are waiting for the latter rain because the early rain and the waiting of it is a miniature of what will happen just prior to the outpouring of the latter rain. And so I urge you if you are not conversant with the book of Acts chapter 2 and the whole book of Acts, read it once again and see what how the Lord worked and decide how and what we need to pray, prepare at this time. The book of Joel chapter 2 at all. The book of Joel chapter 2 of the Lord speaks through Joel. Be glad then ye children of Zion and rejoice in the Lord your God for he hath given you the former rain moderately and he will cause to come down for you the rain the former rain and the latter rain in the first month. The Lord is to bestow rich blessings upon his people. The former rain was to prepare the crops for the latter rain, which then prepares them for the grand harvest. This implies that if the former rain does not accomplish its purpose, the latter rain will not be as of any use or significance because the crops will be dead or live without fruit. So, what can we talk of this generation that is waiting for the second coming of Jesus Christ? It is no time to linger in idleness. It is no time to be preoccupied by the things of this world and to be caught unaware with the worldlings, as it were. 
the church of God need to be a different, a peculiar people, separated from the world. In fact, I'll read some last thing. I'll read something to us. Where actually the Lord is calling This is Testimonies to the Church, Volume 5, as we bring this to a close. God has called his church in this day as he called ancient Israel to stand as a light in the earth. By the mighty cleave of truth, the messages of the first, second, and third angels he has separated them from the churches and from the world to bring them into a sacred nearness to himself. He has made them the depositaries of his law and has committed to them the great truths of prophecy for this time. Like the holy order to ancient Israel. These are sacred trusts to be communicated to the world. The three angels of Revelation 14 represent the people who accept the light of God's message and go forth as his agents to sound the warning throughout the length and breadth of the earth. Christ declares to his followers, ye are the light of the world. To every soul that accepts just the cross of speaks, or the word of the soul. Go ye and preach the gospel to every creature. Nothing is to be permitted to hinder this work. It is the all-important work for, ta for, for time. It is to be far-reaching as eternity. The love that Jesus manifested for the souls of men in the sacrifice which he made for their redemption will perpetuate for is called to be what the disciples were lastly ministry of healing page 104 paragraph 2 the work which the disciples did we also are to do Christian is to be a in sympathy and we are to those in need to help and selfish earnestness to lighten the woes of suffering humanity. You understand well that uh, before the disciples could do such a work, they had to spend three and a half years with Christ. Three years. They had to be acquainted with the work of Christ. They had to learn what it means to be a Christian. And when Christ died for the sins of the world and my sins and your sins, the disciples spent some time when Christ ascended in the upper room, prodding their souls if there was anything still in them that could not allow them to be used of God and be missionaries. Before the early rain could fall, they had to have an experience in the world that was before them. And this is what the Lord is calling us unto, to have an experience in the work that we have to do when actually calamities start falling on the land. We must pray before we cannot prepare at the time of crisis. All religious Liberty will be taken away. Everything in this life seek ye the kingdom of God first, and all the things shall be added unto us. And so instead of spending our times being engrossed in the things of this world, let's have draw closer to Christ that we may not be found wanting in the balances of the sanctuary.
many of the rights will be taken away. But what is Christ telling us? This is to let us look to a call to medical evangelism. As religious aggression subverts the liberties of our nation, those who will stand for freedom of conscience will be placed in unfavorable positions. For their own sake, they should, while they have the opportunity, become intelligent in regard to disease, it is causes, prevention, and cure. All those who do this will find a field of labor anywhere. There will be suffering ones, plenty of them, who will need help, not only among those of our own faith, but largely among those who know not the truth. The shortness of time, brothers and sisters, demands an energy that has not been aroused among those who claim to believe the present truth. Now, freedom of worship in public places due to the circumstances of the disease that is there have been prohibited. And so you can't go outside and say that you are going to do evangelism, but there is one thing you can go out and do, medical missionary work. But you can't go outside and do this work if you have not prepared it earlier for it. This is not the time to sit in easiness. But this is the time to learn of what Christ would want us to do in such a time as this, so that when the times themselves come, they find a people who are ready. No soldier who wants to win a battle goes to train on the battlefield, but he trains prior to it so that when he goes to the battlefield, he may win against the enemy. And so a time to have an upper room experience is now, a time to be prepared is now, so that when the crisis breaks, we are ready for it. May the Lord embrace these things upon our souls. May he prepare us so that we may be an army of youth rightly trained. We read this, that uh, messages to the young people, page 196, paragraph 1. This is the last thing I'm reading. With such an arm of workers, our youth, rightly trained, might furnish how soon the message of a crucified risen and soon coming Savior might be carried to the whole world. How soon might the end come, the end of suffering and sorrow and sin. How soon, in place of possession here, with it is blight of sin and pain, our children might receive the inheritance where the righteous shall inherit the land and dwell therein forever where the inhabitants shall not say, I am sick, and the voice of weeping shall be no more heard. Let us encourage our youth. Let us encourage our people. But we cannot encourage our people, we cannot encourage our youth, if ourselves, our adults, are doing nothing. The elderly people need to, those who have experience, need to train up these ones who are coming up, they don't know from their left and to the right so that they may be able to take up the mantle. The old standard bearers are falling off the scene. And where are the What can be said of this generation? Is it ready to take up the work? Is it ready to do the work of Christ? as the older people are passing where are the young men the standard bearers are falling and young men must be prepared to take these places left back and that the message may still be proclaimed the aggressiveness the aggressive warfare is to be extended. Those who have youth and strength are to go into the dark places of the earth to call perishing souls to repentance. Where are our young men? And where are those that are supposed to be training them to say, take such a mandal? Brothers and sisters, we have been long asleep 
as the faithful toil-worn standard bearers are offering up their lives for the truth's sake, who will come forward to take their place? Will our young men accept the holy trust at the hands of their fathers? Are they preparing to fill the vacancies made by the death of the faithful? Will the apostles charge to be heeded, the call to duty be heard amidst the incitement to selfishness and ambition that allure the youth? May the Lord bless us. May we be encouraged. May we seek an upper room experience like the early disciples sought of it and they were able to be refreshed. May we seek a closer renewal in Christ so that he may reign in our hearts that we may be able to go and do the work. And so repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out and when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord and he shall send Jesus Christ which was before preached unto you. Acts chapter 3, 19 and 20. What we need is a repentance so that our sins may be blotted out and we may be fitted for the work before us. May the Lord bless us. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you. We are the clay and you are the potter. In thy hand we are miry clay, from it find pure gold, vessels that can be used in thy sanctuary. Bless the children and let them have an upper room experience so that when the latter rain comes, they may be numbered among us the pure ministry prepared to finish the work. Bless us now in this Sabbath and commune with us, each of us individually and as a church. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.